How many people can say they travel across a UNESCO World Heritage Site on their way to work every day? Well, for those lucky enough to cross the fourth bridge, that's a reality. This iconic piece of engineering stretches over Scotland's Firth of Forth. And what is a firth? It's a cognate of the word fjord, meaning a narrow inlet of the sea. In this case, the North Sea. And Forth? This Firth takes its name from the river which runs into it, the Forth River. It's not Forth like the number, but instead a word that has etymological roots in a Proto-Celtic word meaning slow running. So an inlet from the sea fed by a slow running river, the Firth of Forth. And the bridge over it is one of the country's greatest triumphs and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The fourth bridge is a symbol of vision, resilience, and human ingenuity. But its story goes back more than a century before the first rivet was driven. In the mid-1800s, Scotland's Industrial Revolution was in full swing, and there was an urgent need for a reliable link across the Firth of Forth. At that time, ferries were slow, unreliable, and just weren't cutting it. A bridge was needed. Now, the idea of a bridge wasn't new. There had been proposals over the years, but they were either too expensive, impractical, or considered impossible. Most engineers thought that crossing such a wide and deep stretch of water simply couldn't be done. But in 1873, two visionary engineers, Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker, had a different idea. Their radical design? A cantilever bridge. A bridge that used balanced arms to transfer weight and pressure which made it possible to span such a huge gap. This bridge would stretch 8,000 feet across the Firth, making it the longest of its kind in the world at the time. But a few recent bridge failures were still fresh in people's minds, and there was a lot of skepticism. So to build public confidence, the engineers pulled off one of the best PR stunts in history. They had a photo taken of themselves lifting fellow engineer Kaichi Watanabe, demonstrating how the cantilever principle worked. It was a success, public opinion shifted, and in 1883, construction began. On March 4, 1890, the fourth bridge was finally opened to the public. A triumph of design, engineering, and endurance, this bridge wasn't just a crossing. It was an achievement made of more than 54,000 tons of steel. And most impressively, it's still standing strong over 130 years later. As a rail fan, I couldn't resist spending a few hours in North Queensferry, soaking in the views. You get amazing shots of the bridge and capture dramatic scenes of the trains crossing its span. And the tunnel at the opposite end of the platform offers another layer of railroading magic. It's hard to beat. And speaking of railroad magic, we've got a ticket for one more unforgettable journey. So let's hop on the next train. Just 20 minutes later, we're back at Waverly Station, right in the heart of Edinburgh. From here, we're heading west, bound for Glasgow, then boarding another ScotRail train to take us through the breathtaking Scottish Highlands. Our destination? Fort William, a picturesque town nestled at the base of the UK's tallest mountain, Ben Nevis. It's one of those places that looks like it was plucked straight from a postcard. But the adventure doesn't stop there. The next day, we return to the station and see a very different kind of train pulling in. It's the real-life Hogwarts Express. Yes, the one from Harry Potter. I mean, how cool is that? We're about to step into the magical world of the books and the movies, riding the train that they actually used to make the films. The adventure continues here, and trust me, it's just as spellbinding as you would expect. <laughs> 